why did it want to punish for the 9-11 attack? Why Afghanistan and not Saudi Arabia? After all, most of the attackers were Saudis. Simple. Saudi Arabia was a rich, with vast oil reserves, and powerful nation, with a large, well-armed by the USA, Army, Navy, and Air Force. Whereas Afghanistan had no Air Force, no real army, and was war-weary, having been occupied for 10 years by the USSR, followed by years of civil war. It was also very poor. Even their opium production was near to extinction since the Taliban came into power. So like all bullies, the US government chose what it thought would be the weakest and easiest option. And so begins our journey. The journey of Omar took 11 years the journey Omar took 11 years ago. His journey from childhood into adulthood. My name is Omar Ahmed Hada. I'm a Canadian citizen. My date of birth is 19th of September 1986. I was born in Scarborough, Ontario. My, my parents were Egyptian and Palestinian descent. My family moved to Pakistan, Afghanistan region when I was a child. As my father worked for a number of charities, including an orphanage with upwards of 500 children. On the 27th of July 2002, age 15, I was in the house in Kost, Afghanistan, where I had been left uh, by my father with three men for whom I was acting as an interpreter. I actually speak four languages. When we were attacked by the US Delta Force unit, a specialist fighting force. The attack by the US forces lasted four hours. The US using rifle fire, grenades, two Apache helicopters, cannon and rocket fire. A pair of A-10 Warthogs strikes building and finally two F-18 Hornets dropped four 500 pounds Mark 82 bombs onto the compound, completely destroying it. Other forces also arrived, bringing total men on the ground to over 100. Yes, that's right. It took four hours, 100 soldiers, two Apache helicopters, two A-10 Warthogs, two F-18 Hornet fighter jets, and four 500-pound bombs to kill three men, all of whom were lightly armed in comparison with rifles, pistols, and hand grenades, and capture one child. During the attack, I was severely wounded, where I and captured. I was shot at at least twice in the back, once through my sh the left shoulder, exiting through my left breast, and once under my right shoulder, exiting out of my upper right side. I was also struck with shrapnel in my eyes and was wounded in my left thigh, knee, ankle and foot. Report from soldier OC1, accidentally released to the press in 2008. Crouching at, at the southeast entrance to the alleyway, OC1 could see a man with a holstered pistol moving on the ground next to an AK-47 with two chestnuts. From his position, OC1 fired a single shot at the man's head, killing him. When the dust cleared, OC1 saw Kadra crouched on his knees, facing away. Away from action and wounded by shrapnel that had just permanently blinded his left eye and shot him twice in the back. OC1 tapped the motionless youth's eyes, confirming that he was still alive. Turning him over onto his back for entering troops to secure. An officer present later recorded in his diary that he was about to tell a crime to kill the when Omar begged them to kill me in perfect English because of 
this, the soldiers decided not to kill him, which would have been a war crime, but to take Omar prisoner for interrogation purposes. I think I remain conscious after being wounded and captured. I remember being carried by my arms and legs to an area in the open where someone put some bandages on me. The soldiers were asking me questions about my, my identity. They then placed me on a wooden ball and carried me into a helicopter. I lost consciousness during the trip in the helicopter. Colonel Donna Hershey, chief nurse at the US military hospital in Baghdad at the time Omar was there, said he'd been categorized as VSI, which stands for very seriously ill, and was a designation given to patients who were not expected to live. She said he arrived from the battlefield unconscious and breathing through a chewing throat. Doctors dispatched him for immediate laboratory work and a CT scan to determine whether he had suffered any brain injury. His head and chest injuries were severe from bullet wounds and his eyes were damaged by shrapnel. His work was done by ER physician who had a trauma who had trauma experience, Hershey said. To conduct surgery on his eyes, the military flew in a U.S. forces of the Obsolomus from Doha because none was available in Afghanistan. The blind in his left eye now, he has sight in his right. Khoda also underwent three other surgeries at the hospital, she said. I was unconscious for about one week after being captured. When I began to regain consciousness, I asked what the date was and knew that I had been unconscious for a week since being captured. I was awake, but I was not right and was out of my wits for about three days. I was in extreme pain and my... And my pain was all I could focus on. I was in a tent hospital on a stretcher. There were two other detainees there with me. One had lost both his legs and often screamed from um, for pain. For action, and often screamed for pain medication. The other day detainee was an older man. While at the tent hospital, I was guarded day and night by pairs of soldiers. During the day, I was guarded by a young blonde soldier who was about 25, and a Mexican or Puerto Rican soldier. During the first three days, I was conscious in the tent hospital. The first soldier would come and sit next to my stretcher and ask me questions. He had paper and took notes. During the first three days, they would shackle my feet and hands to my sides with handcuffs when they did not like the answers I was given to the questions. Due to my injuries, this caused me great pain. At least two of the inter interrogations during these first three days occurred when I was shackled by my hands and feet and in pain. I was unable to even stand at this time, so I was not a threat. I, and I could tell that this treatment was for punishment. And to make me answer questions and give them the answers they wanted. The Hispanic MP acted like he hated me and would often shackle me and cause me pain. He would tell the nurses not to speak nicely or softly to me since he said that I had killed an American soldier. He would also insult me quite often. There were no doctors or nurses present when I was interrogated. During the interrogations, the pain was taking my thoughts away. After I regained consciousness, after being unconscious for a week, the first soldier told me that I had killed an American with a hand grenade. They would only give me pain medication at, na uh, at night time, but the interrogations occurred during the daytime. Omar, Omar was discharged from the hospital on the 12th of August 2002 and taken by stretcher to the cages in Bagram military camp, where his torture really began in earnest. After about two weeks in 